Hey guys, what's up? Lear the Lance Corporal here, and quickly before we get into the content of the video, I just want to give a quick thank you and give my praise to everyone who commented on this video, which was kind of a day zero breaking video of um, what was going on with the whole pay to win controversy of Tarkov, and it was a very civil discussion within YouTube comments, and that is a very, very rare thing to find, and I hope we can keep it going in the future, guys. So really, thank you. But anyway, let's get on to today's video. So to kind of state what two cents means is, for my two cents, one cent's going to represent one perspective, and one cent's going to represent the other. In this case, it is the argument of, is Tarkov pay to win? The one side being yes, and the other side being no. So, mentioning back to the Ground Zero video I did, I said that Tarkov, by definition and by definition only, is pay to win. You simply pay for a bigger package and you get more of, you know, game material that could potentially help you win. But using that broad of a definition is very unfair because this game is very, very forgiving in the fact that you can just do a damn hatchet run and get all of this gear back within literally five to ten minutes. And there were a lot of people in the comment section of that video that were quickly to question my definition of pay to win and provide their own, which really brought me to the attention of what is the real proper definition of pay to win that's given by the industry? And the answer is, there isn't really one. It's all subjective. It's all biased to our own personal opinions. And that's where all of this controversy really stems from, because we don't know. So to really try to define pay to win as an acceptable term without getting too technical, I did a bit of background research on where pay to win really came from. And pay to win is just a concept that's come from the mobile gaming industry, uh, where people would, you know, usually pick a free and what we now call freemium game where you know the first few hours it's fine it's entertaining and then you'd reach some sort of barrier where you would have to wait an exuberant amount of time possibly days worth to get through some small little thing or you'd have to fight an enemy that was ridiculously overpowered for your level uh, yet there was always for both scenarios a convenient little marketplace where you could spend actual money to get in-game currency or abilities or speed up a timer to then get through that area, hence the term pay to win. And then over the years, this idea from the mobile games market has been bleeding into various different games within the console markets and the PC market, and thus you always have these small little controversies pop up with pay to win. Most recently and notorious, the Battlefront 2 loot boxes and the idea of if you pay more for more loot boxes of your actual money, then you can get more abilities that you can use in-game, and thus you would have an easier time winning the game, hence why Battlefront 2 was pay to win. And mind you, these weren't items that you could get in 10 to 15 minutes by carrying nothing but a simple hatchet that you always have. This is uh, stuff that was locked behind up to 50 to 60 hours of playtime in order to play your favorite characters in Battlefront 2, such as Darth Vader or Han Solo, or get the really OP ridiculous weapons. So, to answer this question, I'd really like to show you guys one of my most favorite philosophical pictures that I like to use in these types of arguments. Now, let's pretend the person on the left is a brand new potential consumer and player of Escape from Tarkov, someone who may have heard about the game from YouTube, or maybe has a friend that says, hey, you should really play this game, and this person is doing their own research, and they are scrolling through the Escape from Tarkov website, at the different packages you can buy, and he's seeing that, you know, it's all of this different stuff that you can get, but the more you spend, the more stuff you seem to get, and stuff is good. Therefore, you know, the more stuff you have, the more likely you are to win the game, thus, to him, the game looks kind of pay to win. Now let's look at the person on the right. 
And this person can be a veteran of Tarkov, who, you know, knows how to do hatchling runs, and knows how to grind all the best spots for gear, and he's always, you know, very vocal about sharing his information so everyone knows, and everyone can, you know, have a good experience of playing Escape from Tarkov. He's looking down, and he's giving his perspective on the game to say that, hey, it's not pay to win, because you can literally get all this stuff and more in a very, very short amount of time compared to what normal pay to win games have. And thus, we have two different people with two very different perspectives looking at the same thing from these different perspectives, and yet, they're both technically right. Because, yes, by a technical definition, Tarkov is pay to win. The more money you shell into it, the more stuff you get. But Tarkov is also technically a very simple game once you understand or research the mechanics, and you can blow through any sort of pay to win barrier in as little, oh my freaking god, my English, but as little as 5 to 10 minutes. So, both people are right. So, why isn't this message being given across? Why are there still people arguing from Reddit to YouTube comments over this issue when they're both technically correct? Why can't we all just get along and play the damn game? And it's usually when we have issues like this, it's because of a very specific group of people or someone that are intentionally bad-mouthing one side to promote their other, uh, basically using either logical fallacies or misinformation to basically piss on one side and then, you know, have both sides fight each other. Uh, if you've ever watched South Park uh, on the 20th season or so, uh, a troll basically explains that the whole goal of trolling is not to just piss somebody off, it's to make someone look so ridiculous and have them reply and have their reply be so freaking ridiculous that so many other people are they're gonna, then going to see this ridiculous reply and then comment against this and then you just have everything build on top of each other just out of pure hatred. And yet, all of this wasn't really started by a troll, though by definition he is, it was all started by a YouTuber. And that's really interesting here because now we have two sides of the coin again, two perspectives. This person went to an area where there was no controversy, or maybe it was, you know, a little bit, you could see the potential of starting controversy, and this person started it. Just to rev up one side to then attack the other, and then the other side fires back, and now you have this whole convoluted problem building on itself, all because of what this one person with a very high standing of over a hundred thousand subs basically has to say. And yet, even though I am mad because this person has done this, I can't help but respect this person. Because, from a business standpoint, this is a brilliant move. Now you're probably wondering what the hell I'm talking about, but think about it. If you have a YouTube channel and you're trying to rack in the views because you don't really do content yourself, you just kind of talk about things, one of the best things you can do is start drama. Because drama is what everyone likes these days. A uh, comment a buddy of mine said a, while, a few days ago actually was there's a lot of YouTubers coming out these days that don't actually play games, they just hate games. And that's what people like because that gets drama in, that gets controversy. Because every time someone clicks on your video, you get about, on average, one one hundredth of a penny or so. But that can stack up, especially if you start drama. Because what if you release a video that gets one side going against you? And so much to the point that a bunch of other YouTubers release videos talking about your video. That's going to get all of their fan bases and say, hey, I want to see this video for myself. And they click it. They'll watch it. They'll badmouth you. But they still clicked it and watched the ad that had to play, thereby giving you money. So, you not only milked your viewer base for it, you milked everyone else's viewer base for it, and thus basically made a killing for it. And thus, from a business perspective, why I can understand someone would do this. From a player perspective, I hate your guts. I think that's completely unethical. But from a business perspective, when you're trying to grow a channel and make a bunch of money, because no matter what, people are going to agree with your opinion, because it's the internet after all, and you're still going to gain, you know, views and subs and whatnot, but it's, it's deplorable. Because you're essentially trolling 
and making money off of it. So, in conclusion, is Tarkov pay to win? Yes, literally, and no, literally, based off of perspective. And <sighs> these damn trolls, man. Looking at it, I've I've seen this type of issue come up at least ten times throughout the year on so many different games, and it's bad PR and all this misinformation that can really screw over a community. And it's it's a shame how someone would go so far just to make a buck to screw over so much that so many people have built. And it just shows the human psyche, the evils of it, more or less. But anyway, guys. I'm Liru. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to hear your own comments, thoughts, and any sort of connections you want to make in the YouTube comments below. Again, keep it civil. I don't want to have to grab the hammer. But anyway, guys, go operate operationally. Keep enjoying the Tarkov content. And this has been my two cents. Take care, everybody.